Welcome back to the second part. We're continuing our study on the Lord's Sermon on the Mount. We're in Matthew, the seventh chapter, there in verses 13 and 14. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who enter through it. For the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life, and there are few who find it. We were looking and comparing this with John, the tenth chapter, where Jesus defines himself as the gate. In John 10, the metaphor there is the door. I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved. He also refers to himself as the shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Shepherds, oftentimes in a sheepfold, the sheepfold would in, enclose an area. It would be an open space, and oftentimes the shepherds would actually place themselves in that narrow opening so that they were the way into the sheepfold, and they were also the way out of the sheepfold to go out to pasture, illustrated in this passage. So to come to Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, he is the door, he is the gate. Through the finished work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we call upon God and he saves us. But that entry is one and only one way through Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. This is also seen in Acts, the fourth chapter, there in verse 12. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. There is only one way to be saved, as defined by our Lord's words in the New Testament. There in Romans 10, 13, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. As one enters into that gate by calling upon Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, that is a hard one. It is a free gift, yes, but there are many barriers to sinners to receiving the free gift. The path to destruction, however, is wide and easy. Easy but deadly. Look at Proverbs, the 14th chapter there in verse 12. There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is death. People think they're doing the right thing spiritually, but they're just making it up as they go along. It seems right to them, but it isn't right. Have you ever been uh, out in the woods hiking with someone who had a very bad sense of direction? I think we're almost there. <laughs> I don't think so. I've seen that tree before once or twice or maybe three times. We're just walking in a very large circle. Now that usually is just disconcerting, but it potentially could be physically deadly having a bad physical sense of direction. Having a bad spiritual sense of directions is eternally deadly. Spiritual choices that we make in this life are eternal. A life in Christ is forever, and aren't we thankful for that? or eternal destruction to those rejecting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. In other words, any choice besides calling upon Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior leads to destruction. The gate to eternal life, Zoe, is Jesus himself. Compare John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him would not perish, but have everlasting life, to... Because there is another choice, not calling upon Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And that's in John 3, 18. He who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. This is a binary choice. A sinner either calls upon Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and they're saved and enter into eternal life with the Lord in heaven. Or, as a sinner, they reject Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and that leads to eternal destruction. That is what the Lord is saying early in his ministry in the Sermon on the Mount. In Matthew the 7th chapter, verse 14, it indicates, and there are few who find it. Why do so few find the free gift of eternal life? Romans 6, 23. Some, like many of the Pharisees, because of self-righteousness. They thought in their self-righteousness that they were not sinners. They did not need to be saved. Or in others, they sense a need, but I'll take this path. I'll go with this cult. I'll go with this other religion. I'll follow these false gods. It's easier. It's a path of least resistance. 
It seems like it's more fun and it's certainly easier. I'd just rather go this way. Much like a dead leaf that falls off a tree, gravity, it drops into a creek or river and then that dead leaf floats downstream. Again, gravity, it is following the path of least resistance in the natural world. It is dead. It is going downhill. Salvation, God's way, is narrow. And at this point in verse 14, this is not stenos, it's plebo. It means to press, much like a grape press. Uh, it means trouble, distress. As the Lord calls us to enter through him, the narrow gate, Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. He does also call us to follow him in discipleship. And he warns us that path will not be an easy path because we live in a fallen sinful world. To be saved, it does take enormous spiritual power on God's part. Thus, salvation by works is impossible for man. And after one is saved, there is one way to live, discipleship. Trusting in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, his two-word definition of discipleship, follow me. We see this in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified in Christ, nonetheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. The life I live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This, the Lord warns us in verse 14, this is a hard path. The easy path leading to hell is easy and convenient. Yes, the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior is a free gift. But entering into that life in a fallen sinful world is not an easy path. Many reject Jesus as the gate and following him as their life, but some are saved. Have you personally called upon God to save you? Romans 10, 13, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. It is the narrow gate, Jesus Christ, as a sinner calls upon him. Not that we save ourselves. We call upon Jesus to save us. God saved me a sinner just as the believing criminal next to Jesus on the cross called upon him. And the Lord told the believing criminal on the cross, today thou will be with me in paradise. Romans 10, 13, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Have you personally called upon Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And if you have called upon him, there is only one uh, way to live in Christ, and that is to follow him, not by our power, but by his power, the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We'll see more next week.